doing something we haven't done in a while. Um, I just finished putting uh, the finishing touches on my pedal board, which is laid out right here before you. Um, well, now I won't I'll take that back. Not the finishing touches. We're one pedal shy uh, from the finishing put touches, which will be a uh, volume pedal on this side of the board to go along with the volume pedal on the other side. But, for the most part, other than the volume pedal, the pedal board is completed. Um, so I thought I would uh, review some of the stuff on here. Um, when doing a, you know, a product review of, um, of, pro of, of different pieces of gear, you know, it's like that gear speaks to me. It's like, oh, I'm awesome. Purchase me and then tell people about me. And that's what we're getting ready to do right now is I went to the store. I heard something. It was awesome. Tried it. It was cool. Bought it. And I want to tell everybody about it because there's not a whole lot of videos on YouTube about <coughs> this product. I mean, there's some very vague videos, but nothing really getting into the, uh, the, the, the pedal itself by, like, independent people other than, like, you know, going to that particular company's website. And the pedals that I am talking about, which we're only going to be doing one of them today, and I'll... So anyway, I went actually looking for some uh, more modulation to put on the board. Cause... So I go into Guitar Center looking for this, and the guy and uh, my friend that works there is like, hey, you know, we just got a new shipment of Wagner pedals. And the first thing I'm thinking is, wow, it's just what the world needs. It's a, another overpriced, okay uh, distortion box. And as he's giving me the sales pitch on the pedal, and I'm, you know, zoning him out to the realm of blah, 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 blah. And not really listening, I immediately picked up and started to wait out of my trench when I heard him mention Rupert Neve. Um, Rupert Neve is like a guru in uh, the soundboard industry. Um, whether it's recording consoles or, or, or live mixers, um, Neve boards are they're really known for um, the quality of their a, the quality of their transformers, and B, the quality of their pre Anyway, fast forward, somehow, the gods of music got together and said, Robert Neve, you really need to get in to, um, <laughs> you really need to uh, get in contact with, with, uh, with Bogner, and maybe y'all can put together some really cool pedal thing. And uh, they did, Neve. And I backed him up, I was like, well, what about Rupert Neve? And he was like, oh yeah, the transformer inside this, uh, pedal is uh, designed by Rupert Neve, and I, I of course knew who that was, and I was like, "Wow, it has a power transform in it. That's pretty cool." Now, to me, that's pretty cool because I'm real big into amplifiers and techie stuff. So, what a lot of people don't realize when they think about what goes in to make the sound quality of their amp. What gives it that special voodoo that makes you fall in love with it? People automatically go to, oh, it's the tubes. Or if it's if it's not the preamp tubes, it's the power tube. If it's not the power tube, it's the speaker. And they totally leave out one of the most important pieces of the amp to help with the fidelity of the signal. And that is the power transformer. Or the, output, the power and output transformers. High quality transformers can take a uh, so-so amp and make it sound awesome. And it can take an awesome amp and make it sound like, get out of here. That's, that's what they do. So the fact that these pedals were not being built on a conventional, when I say conventional uh, basis, I mean like conventional for as far as pedals went. Because pedals generally don't use transformers in them. And typically the way to get that amp-like feel out of a pedal would be usually to put a 12AX7 or some sort of tube in uh, the preamp side of uh, the pedal. But Bogner decided to go with adding the transformer uh, into the pedal instead of the tube. And once I plugged into it and started playing the pedal, now mind you, I plugged into it wanting not to like it, expecting not to like it. Uh, um, so within five minutes of touring that, uh, pedal at the store. I immediately told the sales guy, 
I hate you. Because <laughs> I was like, I already had my pedal board, this part of my pedal board completely mapped out, holes are drilled and everything, and then, then this. I said, I got to have it. So I bought it, and I brought it home, and the first thing I did was I head-to-headed this pedal. Because in order for this pedal to, to, to go from that box to here and not wind up back at the store was it had to go head to head with what was here and it had to win. Um, like that. So I had to head to this pedal against the MXR uh, Prime Distortion. It blew that away with ease very quickly. And then I had to head it against the Sovereign and whereas this pedal didn't necessarily have more gain than the Sovereign, it didn't necessarily have more gain than the Prime Distortion. But what it did have, as a result of the Transformer, it had a sweetness in the upper register. And that's the part of most pedals I don't like. It's very hard for me to get a pedal to open up and be bright enough without the brightness just being so spiky that it makes me just not like the pedal. This transformer on this pedal, it put a special sound to the highs that I've always been in love with. Now on that, it's a very responsive pedal, uh, very simple pedal, you know, level, gain, tone knob, so it's a three, three knobber. But you have a little toggle switch here, which is for tight mode and fat mode. In fat mode, things get a lot thicker and a lot, a lot rounder. In tight mode, you know things kind of get a little bit more, a little bit more compressed, um, and sound the bass response gets a little tighter. So it's a lot better for like a lot of palm muting stuff. After. Playing this pedal, of course, I got rid of the Sovereign and the um, Prime Distortion because this one sounded better than both. And at that point, I was like, well, you know, I like the sound of this one so much that I might as well go back and try their overdrive pedal because they had an overdrive pedal called the Wessex. So I went back and I did the same thing. I plugged it into their Vox AC15 that they had there. Played it for about five minutes. It was like, yeah, that one's got to come too. So I replaced the Sovereign and the Prime Distortion with a Bogner Burnley and a Bogner Wessex. The Burnley has a toggle switch also, which has an enhanced on this side and neutral on the other. The, and it's basically what it sounds like. The Enhance is more of a very um, flat boost. It's very transparent. Uh, basically, when you turn that pedal on, you're just adding distortion and boost to whatever you've got tonally set up already. Uh, so it's that's what the neutral side does. The Enhance side, you get a little bit more lows, you get a little bit more highs. When you, when you hit that uh, mode. It comes with, of course, your level, gain, and it has treble and bass. Another cool thing about these two pedals is you can actually see uh, with the LED the pedal working. Um, when you click on the pedal, you get a nice bright LED, but, but as you hit it, the blue turn, the red turns to blue. Uh, I'm not sure if that showed up on the camera because it's pretty far out. But um, anyway, let's get you a, a quick listen. I'm going to let you hear a little bit of what it sounds like. I'm not going to get real off into playing a whole lot. I just want you to really hear the pedal and not necessarily my playing. I'm going to hit it at first with my go-to guitar, which is a, it's a um, Carvin Bolt T. Um, it's got a uh, EMG 60. In the actually is the EMG 60A, the Alnico version, in the bridge and two SAs. Um, it's basically got the David Gilmore preamp in it, and it's and I'm running it using an 18 volt mod. So anyway, that being said, and then after that we're going to run it through with um, 
uh, do a couple of chords and stuff with the uh, Schecter, um, a Schecter Tempest Custom with Seymour Duncan humbuckers. And just to just kind of give you a broad you know, idea of what it sounds like. But anyway, this is the, uh, the, the clean. set at about noon and uh, the level is roughly what I want to say about 10 o'clock Then if we move over to the Wessex 